Sony says no on the new menu system on their older cameras. Geraldin Dunn does some more overheating tests and DP Review sort of wraps up their EOS R5 reviews and tells us exactly what I sort of thought already about overheating. Stay tuned. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's that one camera guy. I'm back at it again with another newsroom roundup video. If you're enjoying this stuff, make sure you hit that like button and get subscribed. Let's go ahead and get started with our first story. This one's coming in from, as you know, Sony Alpha Rumors. So Sony says the new menu is not coming on older cameras. This information is coming from Tweakers. It's a, a website there that older cameras will not get the new menu design because it's technically not possible. The menu is designed to be used with the new Bion ZXR processor. Still, from now on, all future cameras will now have the same Sony A7S menu. And Sony Offerber says this was expected. So Sony says it's technically not possible. I've heard this before. And it's complete and other garbage that Sony would say it's technically not possible. It's complete garbage. Do you remember when the A6300 came out? And during this time, I think the A7R2 was already out and um, they asked, why doesn't the A6300 have in-body image stabilization? Sony said, it's not possible, it's too small. And a few months later, the A6500 came out and what did you know? They did have IBIS in their camera. So I don't really buy into the whole, it's not possible idea too often when it comes to Sony. And we gotta stop buying into this idea that it's always the case. And I think a lot of you are pretty good about that at this point in time. Now, a little while back, as far as the menus were concerned, the A7R 3 came out with a feature in the camera where you were able to hit the rating button. Uh, on here, you had the ability to star photos. And I was like, well, that's cool, but why didn't the A9 get it? So when I had the A9, I said, man, it'd be really nice if I could actually star the photos in here when I had some downtime to have them already pre-set up when I go ahead and load them into like Lightroom or something or Photo Mechanic, but they didn't have it. So I made a video, made a big stink about it. And then uh, some few months later, I think they finally got on the A9. They had a nice update for it. I don't know if my video made a difference at all, but I will say that, um, that was the time I learned that Sony did watch videos and they did pay attention to what people had to say and the feedback that they were getting. And I was also let known that the engineers and the end users don't really communicate very well. And this was probably back in 2017, right? That when you had, a, a, they didn't really know exactly what the end user really wanted. And so there was a lack of communication. Now, granted, I think that has improved. So I'm not gonna deny that on Sony's side of things, but if you want something, you gotta bring it up and you gotta make a stink about it. That's just the bottom line of things. Okay, I've dealt with it before, the whole overheating thing. I'm not gonna repeat that anymore, but point being, bring it up if it's something that you do want. So if you want this new menu system in the A7 III, for example, or in a different model, then make sure you list it down below. I know there's some of you that are gonna say you don't really care for it, it's not a big deal. And I will say to some degree, it really isn't. Sony put in a custom option inside of their menu system so you can go ahead and pull the most prominent features that you need and you can get access to it very quickly. But, you know, when you have a nice menu system like this that makes things a little bit easier to understand, why not give that feature to other cameras? And let alone, I would imagine, why not at least the A7R4 and the A9 Mark II because they were fairly recent camera models and the fact that you created this menu system because it was a bit convoluted. But again, that's just my opinion, but let me know down below if you really do wanna see that happen for your older camera, like an A7 III. As if it doesn't matter, then it's neither here nor there. We don't, there's no point in, in asking Sony to do this if, if they really don't care. Because I think another thing too, I don't know where I caught this, but they were saying that it's not possible to do it because they based that menu system on touch. But I was like, we can still use the thumbstick. We can still use the D-pad. It doesn't mean we can't use it. I mean, I think it's silly, but give people the option if they can go ahead and move on to that particular uh, menu. But that's my thoughts on this. Let me know down below what you think. All right, this next story is from Canon Rumors and it's coming in from Gerald and Dunn's obsessive Canon overheating results. So he's still testing the camera out, which is great. More testing is what we need to know about the camera. So I'm excited about that. Again, for those of you that think I hate so uh, hate Canon, I really do like Canon. I teach with Canon. I'm not gonna go on more of that, but I'm just saying I really wanted to pick up an EOS R5 
And unfortunately, my rental looks like it's gonna wait until probably sept late September till I actually get it hands-on with the camera, so that sucks. But anyway, Gerald did some more testing, and what we find out, I'll only talk about the R5 here, is that what's interesting is that on the external side of things, if you're going to an Atomos, you can actually get really good uh, recording times with the 4K 24 HQ mode at 42 minutes or so for mistesting. testing. There's no overheating that I experience with the eight, uh, with the Atomos with 4K 60. And as you know already, there's no overheating with the lower 4K landscaping modes, which to be honest, would you wanna be recording in that? You would probably wanna use the 4K HQ. Now, whatever your opinion might be of this, this is actually really helpful to get an idea of the limitations of what the camera can do. And it seems to be that Canon was right around the ballpark with regards to recording timeframes for their camera bodies. Now, my only critique on this, and first of all, I'm glad he's doing it, is that these are in ideal situations that he's testing the cameras out. Again, if you're shooting in a wedding, you're shooting at an event, you're shooting with un uh, variable temperatures, you're not really sure of the environment, your miles are gonna vary quite a bit. And that's the scary part about using these cameras in those environments if you're using it primarily for video. So um, really great stuff there. Glad they were getting some more input on this. And uh, hopefully we see more uh, hands-on user uh, cases in the next few weeks. Last piece comes in from a DP Reviews video uh, going over the Canon EOS R5. When I saw this pop up in my feed, I was like, I gotta watch this now because they finally have a production model because they were getting criticized to some degree because they were using pre-production. I remember Cinema 5D being criticized about the R6's overheating situation. And then Dan Watson got roasted quite a bit. And I was like, why, why? There's so many people that want to keep defending Canon so strongly. We're not saying the camera's bad. I'm personally not saying the camera's bad. These people are just trying to show you that the camera does have a flaw and it's not perfect. And uh, the current trend is really the, the cool down time on the camera, even with Armando's experience with it. So let's go ahead and take a look. Oh, actually, we're not going to watch the video. Uh, you can watch it. You probably have already seen it. But I wanted to go ahead and uh, talk about a few of the points that I got from the video here. Um, Jordan says 8K is very sharp, 4K 120P is very good, 4K HQ is the mode that he really likes because obviously you're down sampling from 8K to 4K, which is the mode that I would probably use myself. But he says the biggest issue is that it overheats the camera. And then the cool down time frame is really where you kind of figure out that this camera cannot be used in a lot of cases. Uh, so. He does also mention, so he says 20 minutes of cooldown gave him another five minutes of 8K. Uh, he says one of the issue he has with it, there's no backup options to both cards, meaning you can't record the same exact resolution and information on this on two cards. Obviously there's some proxy options, but not to the degree of the A7S III, for example. He says he likes the dual pixel, hates the 2959 second limitation, which I would agree with myself. He likes the in-body image stabilization. He says Canon has hyped the camera a little too much. Uh, and he finally, uh, as far as his kind of summary of this, he says it's tough to utilize in a production environment, which kind of goes hand in hand with Armando's experience to some degree. And Jordan finds the video feature ends up being a novelty because of its limitations with overheating. So Jordan seems to be a, a really level-headed guy with this and he's giving it a fair assessment. Seems like Canon is going in the right direction with the video features, a lot of great things about it. But the overheating and the cool down thing is an issue in my opinion. And I think if they can resolve the cool down time, we can get a lot more out of it. I wanted to go ahead and talk a little bit about um, uh, this video over here. This is from a user, Brunch Boys. I believe he is also a food vlogger and he does a lot of videos. He says he went from an EOS 5D Mark IV and he's trying out the EOS uh, R5. He says the experience has been pretty great with the camera, photos, stills, and video for the most part. So there's a lot of positive sides to it. Because he shoots like little short clips of uh, B-roll for food when people are preparing food. And then he does a little talking head situations where he's talking about uh, the food and taste testing and all that good stuff. So I'm going to link that video down below so make sure you check it out so you can hear a little bit about his experience. The only time the issue starts to surface is when he actually does a test where he runs the camera at 4K HQ, not an 8K, 4K HQ. He gets almost 30 minutes, camera shuts down, and then he lets it cool for 20 minutes and it gives him five minutes more. And then, um, but what he does say, he actually lets the camera sit for six hours, he comes back to it, 
or so. It could have been six hours. I've got to check it again. But he comes back to it, basically, and it only gives him about five to ten minutes again anyway. So he does say in a real-world scenario that it could become a problem, but for the most part, from what he was showing, it seemed to be doing just fine. So there's some good things about what's going on here, and we're going to see more of this stuff start surfacing, especially people's personal experience with the camera. And I hope that Canon can resolve it through a firmware situation as far as that time lock. And again, this was something that was brought by Armando. Is it a time lock or is it a, set, a camera temperature lock? Which one is it? And um, we definitely want to see some uh, development in that direction. So I don't know. If you've already gotten the camera and you tried it out, uh, let me know your experience down below. Or if there's other videos that have been posted online because I'm trying to see more and more of people's experience with this particular camera. So that's going to do it for me in this Newsroom Around a video. Make sure you drop a like, get subscribed if you haven't done so, and let me know your thoughts on any of the topics we covered down below. And I will catch you guys in the next video.